Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Philip. In this video, we are diving into the world of NFTables limits and meters. If you are looking to take control of your network traffic, NFTables offers some powerful tools. We'll be exploring how to set granular limits on traffic, not just by the number of connections, but also by the amount of data itself, bytes and packets. Uh, this will give you ultimate precision in shaping how much data flows through your network. Meters come in especially handy when you want to track and limit traffic per IP address or even entire subnet. We'll also unveil the secret sauce, how meters and sets work together in NF tables. This lets you create dynamic and flexible rules that can adapt to your network's ever-changing traffic patterns. By the end of the video, you will be an NF tables limit setting pro, ready to fine tune your network traffic exactly how you want it. So let's get started. In NF tables, it's possible to enforce bandwidth limitation or prevent denial of service attack by restricting the numbers of packets or bytes that can flow through a specific connection with a defined time interval. Let me show you some basic concepts. We'll start with limiting the number of incoming ICMP echo requests for our server. I will create an NFTables configuration file, then create an input chain as we'll be filtering incoming traffic. Let's attach it to the input hook on the filter priority and set the default policy to accept. I will match only ICMP protocol, specifically ICMP echo requests that are packets sent by ping command. The final action is to count and discard such packets. Let's save and load the configuration. Now try sending a single ICMP echo request to that server. As expected, the traffic does not go through. Our plan is to block all incoming ICMP echo traffic and then allow only one ICMP echo request per second. Let's match ICMP echo requests and accept it. The trick is to put a rate limit of one packet per second. This rule will match packets with rate up to one per second and accept them. I will reload the configuration and test it out. It works. If we would increase the ping frequency from once per second to twice per second, we'll discover that every other packet is dropped. In other words, if ICMP echo request rate is up to one per second, it's allowed. Otherwise, the packet is dropped. What if you would like to start pinging the server with the regular rate of one per second from two nodes at the same time? Single node looks good. No packets are lost. Let me start pinging the same server from yet another node. It's working but then it's not working, and then working again. What's going on? The thing is, our up to one per second limit is a global limit. So one per second rate applies to all connections. What if you would like to limit the rate to one per second, but to track if so each server has its own limit? Here's where the meters come into play. Meter is an object that has its own hash table and can track the traffic for the corresponding element, for example, source IP address. Let me demo that so you can understand it right away. I will open the configuration file and replace our regular limit with the meter keyword, as we want to use meter to track the limit of traffic. Then let's name it limit ICMP. Inside curly braces, let's put what we want to limit. In our case, we want to limit by source IP. So every source IP will have its own restriction and then let's set the limit to one per second. I will reload and list the configuration. Let's go through that rule again. Here we select echo requests. Those packets are matched against a meter table that holds the source IP address and rate limit of a packet. If the packet rate for a given source IP is under one per second, the packet is accepted. If it's over one per second, 
the rule does not apply and the traffic is dropped in the next line. If I start pinging node 1 from two servers at the same time, like we did before, we see that both servers are getting correct replies. That's because the meter is tracking each IP address individually. To display our meter, let's run nft list meters command. I will increase the frequency on one of the servers to prove that the limiter works. Limits are applied. Every other packet is dropped. If we look at other server that's sending packets under the limit, we see it looks okay. Mind that the limit rate statement will match packets up to one packet per second. It's also possible to rewrite the rule the other way around with the over keyword. If I put rate over one per second, it will match only packets that arrive more frequently than once per second. To make it work, we need to set the rule action to drop. In other words, our rule will match echo requests arriving at a rate greater than one per second and drop them. With this model, we need to allow everything else, so let's remove the drop all ICMP echo line. It's also possible to hash by a subnet. If you'd like to limit echo requests from the whole slash 24 subnet, we could do something like this. I've just added the mask. Let's reload and list the configuration. Now let me run pings from node 2 and node 3 that belong to 1 slash 24 subnet and ping from node 4 that belongs to a different slash 24 subnet. If we look at the meter, we'll see limits set for whole subnet. So the first subnet covers node 2 and node 3 together, and the second subnet covers node 4. We know how to limit traffic on per packet basis with rate and rate over keywords. We also know how to dynamically track the traffic for the corresponding source IP or subnet using meters. Another thing I'd like to show you is burst. Basically, it's a buffer allowing for short bursts of traffic above the set limit. If the traffic stays within the rate, packets are allowed through. If a burst occurs exceeding the rate limit, but not exceeding the burst amount, those packets are also allowed. Once the burst bucket is depleted, the rule will start dropping packets. Burst helps accommodate initial surges in traffic that might otherwise be dropped uh, due to rate limit. Let's try setting up a simple soon flood protection. I will open the configuration file and remove our ICMP rules. Let's match the TCP protocol. We are interested in flag section of the TCP header. We want only the syn flag to be set as we are interested in new connections. We'll be checking fin, syn, uh, reset, and acknowledgement flags. In other words, this rule will match syn only, but not syn fin or syn ac, and so on. If that's a match, we'll jump to another chain. Let's call it syn float. By default, this chain will count and drop the traffic. Let's allow up to 25 syn packets per second with a temporary burst of 50 packets. Let's count such traffic and go back to the input chain. Uh, I will reload and show the configuration every one second. I will go to node 2 and perform a syn float. We'll do hping-s for syn, dash p80 for tcp port 80, and then let's put the IP of node 1. Dash c100 will send 100 packages. Bam! We did send 100 syn packages. If we look at the counters, we'll see that despite the limit being 25 packets per second, 50 packets were allowed due to the burst option. Remaining 50 packets were dropped. If we perform a syn float, that means send packets as fast as possible without showing incoming replies, we'll see how the drop counter climbs. Apart from applying a limit per packet, you can also apply a limit per byte. Let's say we'd like to allow only one megabyte per second of incoming TCP traffic per IP. I will open the configuration file. Uh, we'll match TCP destination port 5201. That's the port that IPERV is using. Then let's create a meter and call it speed limit. 
In curly braces, I will set the key as source IP and limit rate to one megabyte per second. Let's accept such traffic. Uh, traffic over the limit should be dropped. Let's reload and list the configuration. The rules are pretty basic. For TCP traffic to port uh, 5201, let's limit the transaction rate to one megabyte per second. That is around eight megabit per second. Let me start the Hyper server on node one. I will go to another node and run the connection test. Do you see that? Bandwidth is limited to eight megabit. Even if we establish four parallel sessions, it will keep the total transaction rate to eight megabit. If we would like to limit the bandwidth to eight megabit per connection, uh, we would do that by hashing by both source address and source port. Source port will be different for every connection. Let's reload and list the configuration. Now let's start the Hyper server. I will run a bandwidth test using four parallel sessions. Notice, each session is around eight megabit. If we display meters, we'll discover that there are four entries in the table. Each entry tracks a different source port. Another useful feature is contract connection count. It allows you to count the number of connections in the contract table and make decisions based on that. Let's open the configuration file. We'll match incoming packets to port 22, that's SSH. Then we'll set up a meter called SSH limit that will track established connections. Uh, we'll set it so that every IP can establish connections to SSH port. A CT count two means contract connection count needs to be lower or equal to two. We can also do CT count over that would match only if the connection count exceeds a certain number. Let's drop all other traffic to port TCP 22. Let's reload and list the configuration. I will establish first connection to SSH service on node one, now the second connection. Let's check the number of established connections in the node's contract table, it's two. Finally, let's try connecting to SSH for the third time. This time the connection is blocked as the number of established connections per contract exceeds two. Last thing I'd like to show you is using sets and limits together. What if we'd like to temporarily block access if a certain IP goes over the limit? First, let's create a new set and name it block IPv4. It will hold records of type source IP address. I will add a dynamic flag to indicate that the set can be changed from the packet path. I will also add timeout to indicate that the set will support timeouts. This set will hold IPs that cross the limit and should be blocked. Next, let's create a rule that will match all source IP address from our set and then drop them. Finally, we'll match the new connections to port 80 TCP. We'll add a meter named float IPv4 uh, that will consider only packets with rate over one packet per second. Each source IP is tracked individually. Okay. This rule applies if the new TCP connection to port 80 exceeds one packet per second per source IP. If it's a match, let's add the source IP to the block IPv4 set. We know that all IPs that belong to the set are blocked. Lastly, let's add a 60 second timeout so that IPs are removed from the set after 60 seconds. Basically, if traffic from a specific IP address to port 80 TCP exceeds one new connection per second, it will be blocked for 60 seconds. So the meter is tracking the new connection rate uh, and the set is doing the filtering with timeout. Let's reload and list the configuration. I will go to node two and start sending syn packets every second. That's under the limit. It's working okay. If we increase the frequency to every half a second, the connection is working, but then it exceeds the rate and is blocked for 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, uh, the connection is allowed again as the timeout expires. Of course, uh, the meter is tracking each source IP individually. Moreover, the limits are set just for demo purposes. In real life, you would most likely block the IPs for longer. Thanks for watching.
Don't forget to like this video if you found it informative. I will see you in the next one.